then we're only going to go about 30 minutes. We apologize in advance. It's very hard to get in depth in any particular topic in 30 minutes. And we just ask that if something in that 30 minutes piques your, your curiosity, please approach us or any of your distributor sales uh, staff. Um, and, then, and then we can get further into detail with some things. And then this, the, the last 30 minutes of the hour um, is the Lumex presentation for our additive hybrid manufacturer. And Mr. Tom Hewell will come in and give that for us. It's loading, give me one second. All right. Can I get a dance? Yeah. Yeah. Dance? Okay. What do you say the next presentation? The next presentation is the Lumex, the hybrid metal additive. The first one is going to be uh, in regards to transitioning into bio axis. Uh, no, it wasn't. Isn't this the This is what you got. Oh, well, 10 p.m. Y5 axis. Yeah, what we did was, um, in my error, we had not given uh, an allotment for time for the Lumex slot, so they're coming in after us. Yeah, we're just going to go about 3 to 3.30 and then 3.30. You're going to be right here? Where are you going to be? Thank you for joining us. Um, just a, a few brief things about Matsura uh, and an introduction to, to Matsura before I invite Tyler up. Um, we're here now at Matsura USA. We've been in this facility for six years. Um, but we do have two other facilities across the country where we partner with our, our dealers. So on the, on the West Coast for a couple of years now, we have a tech center in Ontario, California, um, where we also have uh, you know, we try to keep five or six machines on the floor there, have open houses, do test cuts, training, and other things in that facility. And then our most recent tech centers in Connecticut, and partnered with Yamazin. This is a beautiful facility if you're in that area. And again, we do training and events there uh, to uh, both partner and strengthen the partnership with our dealers, but also then to put something as close as possible um, in your neck of the woods where you might live uh, to make that uh, easy to be able to access uh, for, for, for training and, and other events. Uh, this question was actually asked of me today. It was quite interesting. Someone asked me about the Matsura logo and the, the three ovals. <coughs> so the, um, just fun fact, the three ovals represent man, earth, and technology, and Matsura's desire for those things to work harmoniously together, right? And, um, and then interestingly, the whole it represents an M for Matsura, and the whole thing is tilted at 23.45 degrees, which is the, the tilt of the Earth's axis. So um, that's the that's the answer. In case you were you were curious, there's always these fun little facts, right? Um, Matsura's philosophy: doing what others do not do. If you were here this morning, and I mentioned that that our company was founded in 1935 by Katsu Matsura's grandfather Toshio Matsura. Uh, beginning with being the first company in Japan to build a, a uh, largely distributed, produced and distributed NC controlled machine in Japan, later to partner with Fanuc as a control provider, but they actually were building their own controls um, in the beginning. Um, so again, their challenge is to build products that are unprecedented in the world, um, do what others do not do or cannot do, right, is our philosophy. So whether it was the FX5 machine that came out in the 1970s with 20,000 RPM, um, or whether it was you know, the first MAM series machine in 1991 with pallets and a tool matrix and five axis unattended machining, or whether it's Lumex today, uh, laser metal centering with uh, machining in the same envelope, uh, we're always trying to stay uh, ahead of the uh, uh, technology, the innovation for the industry, um, for you, for our customer. 
Uh, next, um, if you get an opportunity, I don't know if anyone in the room has ever been to our factory in Japan. We're located in Fukui, Japan, which is on the west coast of Japan, almost just directly across from Tokyo, a little bit south, um, just south of Kanazawa, north of Kyoto. This is a sort of a blown up, this is the region here, uh, Fukui Prefecture. We have two plants there, just about 45 minutes away from each other. The original manufacturing facility where we actually do machining, if you have an opportunity to visit, you'll see Matsuris building Matsuris, you'll see uh, in some of the, in the next slide. Uh, our, our second plant in Etchison City, a lot of assembly is done there, a lot of smaller machine assembly, another beautiful facility. Go on. If you go, we, we get the opportunity to really show you firsthand our build philosophy. Um, we do not assembly line build our machines. A customer that visited with me one time, I think, made the perfect statement, which he said that he felt it was the perfect balance between uh, you know, new world technology and old world craftsmanship all in one place. Um, the, the quality put in, the hand build, you'll see hand scraping, if you've ever seen this done before, where all of the critical mating points where things are bolted together are hand scraped so they're perfectly flat and there's many, many contact points. So that uh, Matsura's philosophy is that the, uh, the secret to long machine tool life is the same as the secret to long human life, and that is reduced stress, right? So they build the machine as stress-free as possible so that it will last as long as possible and be as rigid uh, and accurate as possible. You get an opportunity to see the factory, so you see the craftsmanship in the, in the earlier pictures but you will see the automation. We're using our own, in many cases, our own pallet systems. This one's loaded by FANUC robots onto linear pallets into uh, custom machines that we built ourselves uh, in, a, in a larger envelope than we even sell so that we can build our own components uh, to our specifications. You'll see us building our own spindles in-house um, in, you know, in a class 1000 clean room environment. Um, they will show you firsthand that if the spindle knows there's one micron of runout at 300 millimeters, you have about three microns of runout. So this is the heart of a machine tool. Oh, that's it. Okay, so we, we certainly hope, and I hate that that's so quick and abbreviated, but we certainly hope that we have an opportunity to be able to have you join us someday for a factory tour to see that, that, that combination of new world technology, old world craftsmanship in one place. Now, I'd like to um, invite up Tyler Bondi, but before I do, I just want to explain, Tyler uh, has been with the company for five years here at Matsura USA. He was an applications engineer before he came into the sales department. So Tyler's background is first machining and then applications engineer, engineering for us. So this isn't just, this isn't so much a, a sales shtick as it is um, Tyler's experience in helping customers to transfer into five axis and then into palletized and automated five axis. So I'd like to invite Tyler up and I will. Okay. All right, welcome. Uh, how many people in the room currently are using five axis or utilizing five axis? Okay, good, a few. How many are interested and maybe haven't made that leap yet? Excellent, oh, that's great. You're in the perfect spot there. So, my main purpose today, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. I could talk about this for days um, on the benefits of this. Uh, but really, we've got a few different topics. We're going to talk about why 5-axis, so maybe transitioning into your 5-axis. And then I'm going to go on to automation. We've got two different types. We've got some simple automation and advanced automation. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, animation. Yeah. So one of the main things, I came out of a job shop. Like Dave said, I was a machinist before, turned applications engineer now, turned to the dark side of sales. So one of the main things we did at a job shop was actually this exact thing. We had rows of verticals, bodies in front of them, and we would sit and burger flip parts through the vise. You know, your op 10, your op 20, your op 30. The problem with this is we'd get parts that were six, seven, eight ops. So we would have to make extra parts because we would always screw them up on op six, op seven, op eight, and have to start over again. So when you analyze this, I guarantee you we could come up with at least you know, 18 different endless room or possibilities for error. You've got to have all three vices aligned. You've got
got to have you know soft jaws and op two there, right? Or op twenty. You know, each time you're moving that part around, you got to make sure your vice is clean, straight, parts flat, your tools are set right. Three different work offsets, um, and then three correct programs on those three offsets. So again, you know, every time you're moving that part around, you're opening the room for error. So this is one of the main points of what five axis will eliminate. You can hold that part, index it around, and hit it all in one shot. So I've got two examples here. We've got a dovetail on the right here, and this is our standalone 520 with the side table. So you can do your dovetail prep here, your main op here where you're hitting 90% of that part, and then buzzing off the dovetail. Or you can click this as a video. Uh, this is probably the most popular now of what I'll try to do is figure out how you can make that one up. So hold on to that part, maybe in a self-centered device, and actually tab it. I'm sure this is not that good. Mm. Yeah, that's My a, apologies. That's okay. Those are for coaches. But basically, using the material, maybe you got a little extra material on there, but you break that part off and then just deburr that edge. So a lot of medical companies are doing that right now with bone plates. This is an aerospace bracket for a 737 uh, for an engine. Um, so that's really, you know, the trick to it. Hold it once, get it off the part complete. You can bring your parts to a CMM. You know, we'll see uh, two, a few different ways where you could actually CMM that part with that dovetail, and your CMM actually has that same fixture. So you pull a part out, bring it to your QC, and then if everything checks out, throw it back in, buzz it off, and keep going along. Um, or even heat treating your parts. If you've got maybe in-between ops where you're roughing a part out, uh, pre-finish, you can actually throw it back in and locate it in that same fixture. So some very simple, simple ways to process your part. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, oh, sorry. There. Lots of animation. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so if we analyze that part on the right there, these red sections here are all your setup time or your screw up opportunities, as I would like to say. Where the green is all the runtime. So the green runtime, if you add all that up, that's gonna be the same on both. We don't have any smoke and mirrors or magic tool to actually speed things up per se. The main thing we're after on a five axis is your setup time. Every time you're flipping a part around, you have to stop, if the machine's not running, the spindle's not running, you're not making parts, you're not making money. So that's really one of the main focuses there. So you can see down below here, you've got this big chunk of a good hour that you're on to the next job. Maybe you're doing maintenance on your machine, Hopefully you're on to the next part making some more money. There we go. So we did a little ROI. And we actually have this, uh, if you guys had maybe a specific part in mind that you wanted to try to look in and see on your exact part, we can go through it, but we broke it down. Um, this part is actually eight ops on a BMC. So we got a shop rate of 90 bucks an hour. This tool optimization, what that means is on a five axis, maybe you don't have to have such long tools. So you can go with a shorter tool, actually eliminate uh, tool change time because you can have the same tool in and actually index the part around. So basically you're, you're getting there. Uh, you're eliminating tool change time. Maybe your cut time is faster because you have a better, rigid, more rigid setup. Um, so that's what that means there. We did about 45%. And then your batch size, we had 10 parts. So the cost per part on a BMC, if you add all that time up, <coughs> that extra setup time up. Hey, it's zero. Yeah, there it yeah. is. <laughs> Lights out, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes out to be about 320 bucks per part. When we actually analyze it on a five axis, we're down to about 150 per part. So if you do the math on that, you're almost making about $2,000 more per batch. And that's a batch of 10 parts. So your ROI is actually, if you got enough work for it, the right type of work, you can pay off that machine quite a bit more, quite a bit faster, I should say. Maybe we could use the graphic to buy a new computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> new uh, HDMI. Yeah. So the other thing we like to look at is the, the work holding. So oftentimes one fixture will fit a, a plethora of parts. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is all off the shelf and it's much cheaper too than uh, you know, standard six inch vice or even a tombstone for a horizontal machine center. 
and we do have a little chick one over there for five minutes to you, but um, the whole point is you're not pulling things in and out of the machine like you would a vertical machine center. You're really, you're one, one fixture fits all. It works for everything, so it simplifies the process quite a bit. And again, like I mentioned before, better accessibility to your part, so you can index your shorter tools that are off the shelf. You're not using those long, nasty end mills that chatter like crazy. Again, you can see we've got a nice shorter tool. It's going to be a lot rigid. You can push it a lot faster. So you're cutting parts better, faster. Hopefully, less deflection on your part. The list goes on. Um, this one I like to, to talk about a little bit more. So, from my past history, I ran an older five-axis that we'd actually have to program the center of rotation. So, we actually programmed it seven instead of programming our part like we would on a three-axis center and top. Well, now. There's a lot of functions created in the control. Tilted work plane, tool center front controller, what FANUC uses, so you actually can program a part. So what that means, and what that means to you, is every time you go to reset up that part, it doesn't have to be exactly where it was last time. So in the old days, you'd program your setup, right? You'd program the center of rotation, your part had to be exactly where it was. Well, nowadays, your part can move around. You can probe that part, figure out where it is, and run that same program because you're programming that part. Machine kinematics are stored in the control. We can update that with EZ5 software. So if maybe you have a thermal change, um, maybe the, the machine settles a little bit um, and actually I killed it. He killed it. <laughs> Take a minute here. Keep going. So again, like we say here, post-processing is possible before your setup. So we would get repeat jobs. It would take two days to reset them up. We already had approved out and made them before. With this, it allows us, you know, programs in the machine. We have enough storage in there. You can set it up and get running quicker and faster. Uh, with tool center point control, there's a note here, linearization is executed on the controller side. So if you had to change a feed rate maybe on the control, you would have thousands of lines of codes because you had each individual point that was a move. Now you've got one feed rate, one spindle speed. So it's it's a very easier process. The code looks better. It's more easy to understand for your operators running the machines. Uh, this one's, I think uh, Moody already talked about this, but the, the technology, we're in a great time right now. You know, I was in this job shop seven years ago and it was, uh, you know, the, the machine was here, software was here, tooling was kind of in the middle somewhere. Right now, everything's really on a level playing field. We've got barrel cutter, or, uh, parabolic tools, they call them, I guess, uh, where you can actually, instead of using a traditional ball end mill doing small step overs like that, you've got this larger radius and with five axis tool pads, you can do a larger step over, getting better surface finish. We've done quite a bit of testing at Matsura, seeing 50% increase in cycle time, but the same surface finish. So you get a little bit more competitive when you're quoting uh, complex jobs, you know, it's a pretty pretty large uh, mold there, or even any kind of manifold work like that, so. So this is a statistic that I pulled the other day. So from 2005 to 2018, you can see in the gray is the amount of five axis machines we actually sell. So those of you that maybe haven't made that leap yet, maybe this will help explain, you know, your competition is already there. They're spending the money on that. Um, they're, they're making that, that leap of faith. And it's paying out quite well. And so I'll use this as kind of a segue. You know, you'd be going from your, your vertical machine center to your standalone five axis, where you're getting your feet wet, you're walking before you're running understanding the concepts, how you can implement that kind of technology into your shop before you get up into the full-blown automation where you're running lights out maybe through a night shift at first and then in through the weekend. We've got a lot of customers out 
in uh, the New England Territory, specifically to work with the I've seen this firsthand. It's great to see it keeps the lights on and keeps us competitive with overseas manufacturing. Any questions so far? None? All right, great. So, we'll bring into the uh, Y automated five axis. So let's say you get that first five axis in, now you're having trouble finding machinists. It's tough to find a, a decent machinist anyways. So you need more throughput. You've got a high mix, low volume of parts, maybe a part family, so similar parts. Your uh, current shop workload is at max capacity. You don't, you can't find any operators, so you can't add a second or third shift. But you need to make these more parts. You've got all this work coming in for you. The other, the other thing too, popular for aerospace is a just-in-time <coughs> manufacturing, so you can yeah. deliver assemblies. And, yeah. So here we'll bring up that craft unit. So this is just trying to show just a standard shop, maybe running one shift. So this would be your eight hour, nine hour shift throughout a week. Where you got a multi-pallet, maybe you set it up, again, the machine's running, the spindle's running, offline maybe you're setting up other jobs. So you've got you know, 168 hours in a week. You know, why don't you use those? You know, even a, a portion of those if you can. It's free time. And that broke down that graph just last year. What we sold, that 70% of five axis, 34% were just standalone machines. The other two, the 34 and 32% were MX with pallets or MAM machines with pallets. So again, the industry uh, and other shops are really, they made that leap. They're, they're, uh, they're investing in it and it's working for them. So I'll bring that into our simple automation line, our MX series. So our 330, the smallest. 520 is the, the middle platform, and the 850, the newest in line. So the MX series with simple automation is really, it's intended to run for an overnight. If you do the math, if you got 10 pallets, maybe your part cycle time is an hour, hour and a half per pallet. You get about 10 and a half, 12 hours worth of run time. So um, I've seen customers run all the same parts, just run through production nonstop. I've seen customers run three or four part families in, but you really start running into limitations with the amount of tools, being that this is spec out 90. On the 850, you can get up to 120 tools on the bigger parts. Um, there's thermal compensation standard. So again, the when you're running unattended, that's one of the main things. You want to be making sure you're making good parts, you're not making scrap. The uh, sheet metal is all angled inside. We have wash down, so you're not having chips build up. When it's pallet changing, you don't want the, the chips built up in a corner and to rip away cover up and you're pumping chips and cooling into your components. So that's a very important piece. The footprint is an, another key feature, which you can see on all of our machines. You know, we got the, the lift up chip conveyor tucked back behind the pallet pool here, so you've got a nice small square footprint. And then I'll bring you into the, the MAM. So what's really gonna deter people is really the, the MX line was was really brought out to transition into get you to implement automation into your shop. We've seen people that uh, they really struggle at first of scheduling work. They, they've never ran unattended and they don't realize how quick you can run out of work. But you get to a point where you run out of room for pallets and tools, so that's really when you want to step up into a man. Um, it's really designed the the MAM 72 is Matsura Advanced Manufacturing, 72 hours. So it's designed to run 72 hours. You can set it up Friday, push start, go home for the weekend, come in Monday. Hopefully it's still maybe running or finishing up your part. Pull off all your parts, swap them out, load it up again, check all your tools in the back, make sure they're all still good. Keep it running. So there's uh, flexible pallet systems. Most of the MAMs are standard two pallets. Uh, to start with, you can get up to 91 on the LF. Anywhere from uh, 240 up to 520 tools. So again, you've got enough tools for backup if you break something or wear out while you're running when nobody's there, the machine's gonna continue running on. The higher spec thermal comp, and again, compact footprint. So any of this stuff, 
that I talked over, I, again, I went very brief, you know, we've got a short window, but we're here all day tomorrow again and some time today. So please, you know, grab us, let us know uh, if you have any questions or, or if you would like us to do any kind of ROI. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much.